What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here tonight with another review for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City Season 2, Episode 5. The episode was titled Jen and Barrett. <sighs> Alright, you guys, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other on the channel and are not yet subscribed to the channel, I'm gonna need you guys to do me a solid favor and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell button, share the video, and with that out the way, without further ado, Let's discuss the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, you guys. Now, before we actually get into the review, the reason that these video, the reason that I'm recording a little bit later, because I'm trying to get back to how I used to be, right? Have the videos up for you guys within an hour to two hours after the show goes off. I'm trying to get back to that. But the reason that this is late tonight is because I was watching Watch What Happens Live, and Mary was on there tonight with Hey Arnold Stewie, but Mary. Cosby hilarious like <laughs> Andy asked at one point he was like he's like I'm here with Mary M Cosby he's like what does the M stand for she says my middle name he says what is your middle name she says Mary Martha Cosby then he had her play this game where her you know one of her wig heads was asking her questions right and it asked her of her castmates who has the worst style she says who or how many I was like, how many, Mary? You should include yourself in that. But she says, Whitney. Then she they asked the question of who, you know, has gotten, um, like, you know, let the fame go to their head, right? She says, who or how many? Then she says, Whitney, that bobblehead. <laughs> she said, Whitney, that bobblehead. She said, Lisa. She said, Heather. And she said, the new girl, Jenny. Then Andy, someone asked Jen, I mean, not, not Jen, but Mary, why is she only following Meredith and, who is she, she following? Meredith and Jen on Instagram, right? So she said <laughs> she couldn't come up with a good reason why. She said, when I unfollow people, I don't go back and look. They said, why are you following them and not the other ladies? Then they asked her, did she regret saying on social media that Whitney was a racist? She did not back down about that, but she said she did delete the tweets because she just felt like that was the right thing to do. Mary is an interesting person. And, you know, like I did I say this last week or not? Like I found out that Whitney supports, you know, who y'all know who you know who is, right? The former president. I'm going to hope Whitney is just... You guys know I love Whitney. That's what's hard for me when it comes to these. I mean, y'all do realize that a lot of these housewives, especially the white ones, are Republicans. But hey, y'all just want to come in on come down on Dallas. It's a lot more that are you know who supporters than the Dallas housewives, and I don't even think that a lot of them were supporters of you know who. But hey. Let's talk about Salt Lake City. Now let's talk about the episode, shall we? Damn. All right, you guys. Um, where do we want to start up at? Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This episode, it was me. It wasn't much that happened in this episode. So, actually, we'll go in order. We'll go in order because... No scene with any of the ladies was like, just tat out. So let's talk about Meredith 2.0, AKA Lisa. So we see Lisa, right? So Lisa is, she, you know, she's talking to her son. He's getting ready to go to work. And then we see her, she goes and talks to John. So she tells John, so um, she didn't sleep well last night. And she, I'm like, oh, you didn't sleep well last night. <clears throat> I wonder why. Well, she told us why. She says she felt blindsided and she felt ambushed. And John agrees with her. I'm like, John, she wasn't blindsided and she wasn't ambushed. Like, to blindside, well, I guess I, I guess I can give her, I guess I can see how she felt blindsided, right? But ambushed, Angie pulled you to the side and had a conversation with you. So I don't see how you felt blindsided or ambushed. I don't see how you felt that way, but hey, if that's how Lisa felt, Lisa felt that way, right? But she also feels that Whitney is manipulating um, 
Angie, right? And this 20 plus year friendship that she's had with Angie. And it was in, no, it wasn't in this moment. It was actually in the moment later in the episode that I was like, you know what? I'm starting to see a, a, a comparison between Lisa and Jen, right? Lisa and Jen are the type that, you know, they'll say stuff and do things right. But then once you call them on it, they're the types that'll be like, oh my God, I didn't do that. I would never do that. That's not who I am. They'll basically gaslight you. They'll basically make you feel like you're a nutcase, you're crazy, that you're losing your mind. Because that's literally what Lisa did in this episode. And also, I just feel like Lisa's delusional as hell. So... We see Lisa, as she's meeting up with Whitney, right? So they're going to be having, they're going to do, a, you know, some gin. They're actually, they never, even, they never even had any gin, but hey, whatever. So they're sitting down, right? Absolutely no way in hell if I was Whitney when I've sat down with Lisa. I mean, you completely ignored me at Angie's party, right? And then you referred to me as that thing. I would have been done with you at that point. So Lisa says that she has, I have absolutely no issue with you, wet knee. And you know, everything has just been a complete misunderstanding up until now. Girl, how has everything been a misunderstanding? I'm just not drawing the, comp this is why I say that she and Jen are so much alike, right? They will gaslight you. They will make you think that you're the, you're losing your mind. Because, I mean, if you, I mean, I saw with my own two eyes, I've heard things with my two ears. And here you are making me feel like I can't trust my own eyes or my ears. Yeah, I would have never met with her. Keeping it real. Let's be honest. Would have never met with her. But let's move on. All right, you guys. Next up, let's discuss Ms. Whitney. So we see Whitney. She's with her kids, right? She's telling her kids to do their homework. It is so interesting. I, I am so ready to see how the rest of this, this season plays out. Knowing that Mary has an issue with both Whitney and Heather. Because you guys know, she's gone on social media and called... She's called both of them racist. So I'm just wondering how in the hell that's going to play out. It's going to be interesting to see, right? So... In the beginning of the episode, we saw what all the ladies were doing, right? So Mary was baking some cookies. So she took these cookies over to Whitney's house. And I'm so sorry to tell you guys, but there is no way in God's green earth on or in hell that I would ever eat anything that a Mary Cosby made. I just don't trust Mary that much. Like her, she's hilarious, but absolutely not. Would have tossed them cookies right in the motherfucking trash, right? I'm just keeping it real with you. Y'all know I'm, I, yeah, those cookies would have went in the trash. So Mary, I'm guessing that Mary has been hanging out with our girl Erica Girardi from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because Mary told this story about someone getting into a car accident, you know, actually, I don't know if they got into a car accident. I do know she said this, this girl, she flew out of her, her did she say her car seat? Can't remember she said a car seat, but she said she flew, she was ejected from the sunroof of the car and went onto the freeway. So <laughs> Whitney's kids said, did she survive? She said, no. <laughs> Looking at Mary, Mary has no, Mary lacks empathy. That is the one thing that I'm noticing about Mary Cosby. Mary lacks any kind of empathy, right? Because the way she was telling it to those kids, I'm like, if you're you're the first lady of the church, well, technically you're the pastor of the church, right? How in the hell did you talk to that family about their daughter, you know, dying? Like, did you show any kind of emotion? I sincerely doubt it. I sincerely doubt it. But that is why I said last season I would never, in two million years, I would never go to Mary's church. It just wouldn't be for me. Like. Mary shows, I mean, she really does lack empathy, right? So then they do talk about Angie's party, right? And the one thing that I will say that Mary said that I absolutely 100% agreed with was the fact that if Lisa and Whitney don't really see it for each other, right? Then why is Whitney so, 
basically trying to get Lisa's acceptance. Like, girl, let her be and you do you and don't worry about her. And I was with Mary on that one, right? But we're going to move on. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Heather. So with Heather, it ain't much with Heather either. So I'm going to breeze through this. I'm going to try to make it at least a minute long. But with Heather, you guys know Heather has her oldest daughter, Ashley, that's getting ready to go off to college, right? So Ashley has this college that she, des not, I don't want to say desperately because that's not the correct word. This is her dream college, the one that she wants to go to, right? So she's telling Heather about, you know, when people get accepted, they get their, e they get their letter and there's confetti that comes out, right? So Ashley has a computer, she logs into her email and she checks her email and congratulations, Ashley has been accepted into the college, right? So then we later see Heather and she and Meredith, they went skiing. <sighs> Heather is an interesting, right? Heather is an interesting one, I wanna say. And the reason that I say Heather is interesting is because we all know what Heather's story is, right? She was raised Mormon, so she has these traditional Mormon values and beliefs, right? But we all know that, you know, when she got excommunicated, she felt free to be herself, right? So that's basically what she wants for Ashley. And, you know, she's talking, you know, she's talking to um, Meredith about, you know, when her kids went out to college and, you know, how she was with them, right? And... The one thing I was looking at this whole time, they were, I'm like, y'all are outside in the snow. I'm like, God, I couldn't do it. Like, I would be freezing, right? But Heather is talking about having a sex conversation with her, right? Like, one side of Heather is like, you know, you know, you don't want to think that she's having sex, but Heather is an interesting one, right? Because of her, it's her background, right? Heather doesn't want her to just basically, you know, be like a her and wait until marriage to have sex right if you're gonna do it i mean go ahead and do it right don't let your religion dictate what you can and cannot do because come on even i mean let's just think about it the bible all those verses and everything that's in there some of those things are so outdated but we still you know i mean in a, in a sin is a sin right he died for our sins correct so Heather, yeah, Heather's gonna have the sex conversation with, she actually, she hasn't had the sex conversation with them because I guess Heather was teaching the girls abstinence, which nothing's wrong with that, right? Absolutely there's nothing wrong with teaching the girls abstinence. But you can also teach to tell the girls that if you do have sex, be safe, number one, be safe. And number two, just be, when you do choose to have sex, choose a partner wisely that's the best thing that i can say but that's it we're gonna move on i went for three minutes didn't even expect to do that let's move on all right you guys oh god jen 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 every time that i see jen shaw on the on the screen I mean, the word that just pops up on my screen when I see her is culture vulture. Every time I see that woman, it's like you are doing everything you can to appear as a black woman, right? I mean, I'm not even ready to see Jen in them, in them, um, them braids. <laughs> like Jen just gives me, I want to be down so badly. Like, I want to be a sister, but you bleached your skin, just saying. So, Jen is having this, you know, this meeting with both, well, technically, she's just meeting with Brooks, but Meredith and Brooks showed up, right? And you guys remember earlier when I was telling you guys about, um, what's her name? Lisa, how I feel like Lisa and Jen are basically the same person because they may, they, they manage to make us, they take a situation, right? You're telling them shit that you see with your own two eyes or that you've heard with your ears, right? And they manage to say, oh, well, that wasn't me or, oh, that, I didn't say that. And it's just like, but you did. 
And her, and you know, Jen is still in the whole mindset of, oh, I don't run my social media. I didn't say that. And, you know, but I did have a conversation with my team and, you know, um, she apologizes to him, but she said she didn't know that it hurt him so much. I'm just like, <laughs> you're not that stupid, Jen. You might want to play it, but you're not, right? Because Brooks was telling her that some of the tweets that she liked are things that he's heard, you know, growing up, right? And I'm just like, any common, any person with common sense would have been like, you know, let me not like this stuff. Let me not retweet this. Or even tell your, like what Meredith said in the previous episode, tell your, tell your team, don't like anything disparaging or hurtful or demeaning to anyone, right? But whatever, Jen is full of shit. Meredith, tread lightly with Jen. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this scene in here with Jen while I'm talking about her. It's the guys. The guys met up, they had guys not out, so the guys are like all the other guys on the other Housewives franchise. They are cool with each other despite the fact that their wives have issues with each other, right? They talk about sex. Seth, I know you were trying to be funny, but the fact that you said that, you know, Meredith told you, you know, when you have you have sex with you have sex with her when she's asleep, that's not the night. I mean, that's that sounds like rape, buddy. Just saying, that sounds like that one. But um, yeah, let's move on. And I think actually, yeah, we're, we're gonna move on. We're gonna wrap up. All right, you guys, let's talk about Jenny. So Jenny and Whitney, they're meeting up with each other, right? And they're having lunch. So didn't, I mean, we're five episodes in, right? Still, I mean, I like Jenny, but um, she hasn't done anything that stands out just yet, right? So they talk about business, right? So it, it's kind of interesting, right? Because you guys remember, Whitney was a housewife. Now Whitney wants to go or to go back, go into the workforce, right? And Jenny, you guys remember, Jenny told us that she had five um, practices that she has, but now she's down to one. And I feel like Jenny, well, Jenny was talking about, you know, her being with her family, right? So then they talk about children. Whitney is talking about she wants to have more kids with um, Justin, but she can't have more kids with Justin because Justin got a vasectomy. But a vasectomy, is, a vasectomy is reversible, isn't it? And then also that she's like, you know, every time that I'm late, I always wonder, ooh, am I pregnant? But Jenny is the opposite, right? You guys know Dewey wants more kids. And I think Jen, Jenny said he's in his 50s, right? Dewey wants more kids, but Jenny doesn't. And I, don't, I actually don't blame Jenny for not wanting more kids, right? Because she's like, you know, my daughter, she's nine years old. She can do for herself, right? I don't, because, you know, Whitney was like, but you can have a surrogate. She was like, I could, but girl, I don't want to change a diaper. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm good with my life is right now with my kids. My kids are old enough to take care of, to do for themselves. I don't have to, I don't have to wake up in the late nights to get a bottle, do this, do that. So I'm like, okay. So then Jenny does talk about, you know, um, they talk about um, Lisa, right? And Jenny's talking about, you know, she's a good person. She's this, she's that, she's fun. She's all these kind of different adjectives. And I'm like, girl, what Lisa are we talking about? Are we talking about the same Lisa? We can't be. You must be talking about Lisa and I must be dealing with Meredith 2.0 because the person that you're talking about is not the same person that we see on this screen. Even Whitney said it. Who, who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? <laughs> not the same person. But that's the review, you guys. Um, let me know what you guys thought about it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop anything else. Share the video. And until the next one, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, socially distance. Be blessed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Come on.